I hope all you voters out there have seen our message that our Fiji First Party stands to help low-income people. Yes, we are for the poor. <laughs> One of the extraordinary things that are taking place in this elections campaign is the repetition of claims that this government has been for the low-income people. The facts indicate completely the opposite. The Employment Unemployment Survey for 2010 and 11, which allowed you to compare with 2004 and 5, showed that in Fiji, poverty increased from 30% to 45% in the first five years of the Beni Marama government's reign. In rural areas, it increased from 34% to 55%. Urban areas, it increased from 25% to 35 percent. And the poverty of workers who were dependent on subsistence, and these are mostly the indigenous Fijians, they increased from 35 percent to 67 percent because their money incomes did not increase while the cost of living kept on going up. What the data also shows is that employees who were not covered by the Fiji National Provident Fund, and many of them would have been covered by wages councils, which I'll come to in a moment, that their poverty increased from 50%, a massive 50%, to 60%, while those covered by FNPF remained about the same at 20%. Now, for the lowest income people, a very, very large number in excess of 50,000 depended on wages councils to give them their wage increases. They did not see any wage increases for five years, despite all the efforts of Father Kevin Barr, his wages regulations orders were postponed year after year because employers went behind his back to see the re relevant ministers, and you can guess who the relevant ministers were. And ultimately, when their wage increases were granted, they were a small fraction of the change in the cost of living, and all their real income went backwards, of course. Now, one of the things that we have to think about is that the low-income people, well, Governments might claim, oh, we have raised the income tax threshold to $16,000, they don't pay any tax. This is a blatant lie. All people in the country who spend money on processed goods, etc., they pay taxes through the value-added tax. And the low-income people have seen the tax on them, the VAT on them, increase from 12.5% by this government to 15%. FERCA data indicates clearly that the value-added tax is the most buoyant of all the tax revenues that they have, producing in excess of $800 million a year. Under this Beni Marama government, while they claim to help the low-income people, the reality is the opposite. They have helped the high-income people. In the 2012 budget, they brought the company tax down from 28% to 20%, and even lower to 18% for those listed on the stock exchange. They brought the income tax at the highest levels on people who are earning large, large incomes down from 30% to 20%. And very rough estimates would indicate that in, in doing so, with the stroke of a pen by an illegal minister of finance, the Beni Marama government gave back to the rich of this country more than $150 million a year. They have helped the rich rather than the poor. And of course, that lost revenue has been made up by FERCA, by all kinds of pressure on small and medium enterprises, on fees, on charges, and of course, on making sure that the VAT is collected efficiently. The burden has shifted from the rich to the middle classes and the poor people in this country, quite contrary to the propaganda in the election campaign that a certain government is very, very much in favor of low-income people.